If you have timber on your property and are interested in eco-forestry, at this stage you will want to consult with an eco-forester. They can help you plan your trails and select trees for the first cut. Before anything is cut, there are a few things you need to know. What is the volume of standing timber and what is the growth rate of the trees in your area? At Wildwood, a growth rate of 2% a year for the area was considered a conservative estimate. Based on this information, Merv set about planning his first cut. In this type of sustainable selection, only the annual growth rate of the forest is harvested. Merv started out with 1.5 million board feet standing. Since 1945, he's cut 1.8 million board feet. In 1995, a government timber cruise confirmed that he had 1.7 million board feet of commercial timber growing on his property. In other words, in 50 years, he replaced the original volume of timber on his property. Merv, like many other foresters, has always used board feet. To put this into perspective, a highway truckload of logs is about 5,000 board feet, or 30 cubic meters. When I started cutting uh, in 1945, this was a, a stand of completely uncut timber. It was virgin timber, in other words, a, a rainforest. And now the composition of that forest uh, ha in species has not changed very much, but in sizes it has changed a lot. As the larger ones uh, were cut out and thinned out, uh, the, uh, the younger trees uh, have taken over as the um, greatest number of stems. So there is a big difference in the, uh, in the size of stems, but not in the composition of the forest. Uh, the fir, cedar, hemlock, and uh, balsam have remained virtually the same in ratio of stems. Um, but they have changed in sizes. So uh, it, this has simply uh, changed a, a ratio of sizes. It hasn't changed the volume in the forest. These numbers are small by commercial forestry standards, but the theory of only cutting what the forest can grow could be applied to any forest, anywhere, on any scale. In financial terms, this is like protecting the capital while living off the interest. The key is to do more with the wood that is cut to maintain existing employment levels. When Merv selects trees, there are a number of factors. If he sees a tree that is under stress and possibly diseased, he will fall it while the wood is still of use. Uh, when a, a, a tree, hemlock particularly, and, and Douglas fir show the same thing, well, cedar does as well. Uh, when a tree begins to swell in the butt, and that, uh, that diameter doesn't, uh, doesn't taper into the tree properly as it should, then you know that the, the roots of the tree are in trouble. It is beginning to develop one or other of the dozens of uh, root and rot problems that uh, affect our trees. But it's at a point now where it is a, a piece of prime timber. There is a lot of absolutely clear wood in the base of the tree, which is ideal for interior finishing. And we have customers that like to get that kind of wood. That tree right now is perfectly healthy, right to the ground. There's a temptation to leave it, but another two or three years, it could have started the deterioration problem and I would lose the best part of the tree. So because I'm, I'm a cautious person and don't gamble, I'm going to take that tree and this year. We will, we will get some prime wood out of it, and it is old enough and has been seeding very well here. So there are a lot of young hemlocks in here, some of which may turn out to be just as good trees as the adult. A main consideration at Wildwood is to ensure the shape, length, and width of the crowns of the trees in the forest canopy are maintained in vigorous condition to capture the most light and obtain optimum tree growth, taking into account the needs of a naturally diverse forest. 
Merv has always tried to maintain a continuous canopy. In general, he manages his forest to allow 50% light and 50% shade on the forest floor, and he has observed that this approach has worked well for him in terms of natural seeding and regeneration. For brush control, he grazes sheep on occasion, about one sheep for every three acres. This keeps the undergrowth under control so that the sunlight can get through to the seedlings. In a forest where deer and elk are present, their grazing will help to keep undergrowth under control. Merv loves to show people his forest. This group is here at an open house to learn about selection harvesting. The first thing you need to know about falling trees is that it is very dangerous work and best left to the professionals. When falling a tree, there are a few things to take into consideration. Where is a trail that the log will be skidded out on and where can it be dropped doing the least damage? Whenever possible, eco-foresters avoid damage to young trees and lie the logs in the direction they will be pulled out, preferably but first. The other criteria are minimal damage to older trees that are left standing. This is where it gets tricky, especially in the dense second growth forest. If the trees are laying in the right direction, the skitter operator or horse handler simply drags the log straight out onto the trail with as little impact on the forest floor as possible. Ooh. 